Hey guys, makeup aside today, let's do a little mental health check-in. I know, it's it's tough to talk about, but it needs to be talked about, and it's Bell Let's Talk Day, and you guys go out and use the hashtag Bell Let's Talk, let's use the Snapchat filters. They are giving five cents for every hashtag Bell Let's Talk that is sent out, and every time you use that filter to send a Snapchat. So make sure you're using them. Um, so my story with mental health is really not my story to tell. It's my daughter's. And when she was in grade eight, um, that's, I believe when she started struggling with anxiety and depression and I had no clue. I had no idea what she was going through. And I thought she was just being a typical teenager, you know, quiet in her room to, her, to herself <clears throat> And yeah, I just had no idea. And then one night we were on our way home from gymnastics and she told me, she told me that she tried to, tried to commit suicide. And I just went into like a state of shock. I was like, what do I do? How do I help you? How do I fix this? And that was the crazy thing. You, you can't fix it. You can't. You can't fix it. And so we went to the hospital and we got her on some medication and we were seeing counselors and it was a daily struggle. Like for her, because she felt like garbage all the time and wanted to end her life. And for us, because we didn't know if she was ever gonna succeed. When you're scared that you're going to go to wake your kid up for school one day and she's not going to be alive. That's a really shitty feeling. So <clears throat> needless to say, we, my husband and I were a wreck and we locked up everything. Like there was no access to medication. There was no access to knives. There was like... Everything was under lock and key. And if you can imagine from going to, like from not even thinking about it, like not even realizing she was struggling alone and then all of a sudden having to like totally switch gears and like lock things away from your teenage daughter. Like she had to ask me for a steak knife so that she could cut her, her meat up and you know, for supper. We kind of got through it. Well, of course we got through it. We're getting through it. We manage all the time. But we, you know, I like I said, we were seeing the counselor and getting her the help she needed. But sometimes she would just shut down. And it, it was almost like she would, like, stare through me. Like, like she was gone. Like she wasn't even there. So if she was struggling with her depression... Um, it like, it was like, she just blacked out you, she had a blank stare and some nights I would just go down and sleep with her and hold her. And in the morning <clears throat> she would sometimes say, you know, mom, I feel better just cause you were with me. So make sure that you put it out there, that you be there. And sometimes that's all you can do fix depression you can't fix anxiety and for uh, as a parent we want to fix everything we want to make everything okay for our kids but we can't so we learn to deal with it we learn to use as many tools as we can to help them and sometimes it really is just a check-in like how are you doing or going and giving them a hug it makes them feel better like, and you know, through her high school years, it seemed to get a little bit better. But with the beginning of COVID again, and being, she doesn't live at home anymore. She's up in Regina and she struggles with being lonely, right? It's not good for our mental health. And so she was able to recognize though, this time that she needed help and she sought out help. And I was so proud of her for doing Lots of people just suffer in silence and give up on the hope of feeling better. And that's when they do take their lives. And it's an illness. It's not them being selfish because it's not actually them 
thinking, you know, it's not them. It's not the person they are if they do take their lives. It's, it's not, it's, it's crazy. And I've seen it. I've seen it in, in Peyton's eyes that it's not her when she's got, when she's struggling. It's something, it's something completely different and terrible. But anyways, she's got the help and she's using her tools and it is helping. It's not, it's not cured and it's not fantastic, but she's managing and she's living each day at a time. And it's so, with that said, use, use the hashtag, use it, use it for me, use it for you, use it for anyone you know who struggles with mental health. There's thousands and thousands of people struggling. So use it. They need the help. Ask hard questions. Hard questions are good. It could save someone's life. And just be there. Be there for the support. And that's it. That's it, you guys. That's my, that's my story. And it was tough. It's still tough. And it'll be ongoing, I'm sure, forever. It's something that we are always going to have to deal with. And it's something that will never go away. But if we can get the tools and the help that people with, that struggle with anxiety and depression and any mental health issue, oh, let's do it. Let's support these causes. Hashtag Bella Stock.